Hi, welcome to Jeff Wigner Ford. My name is Greg. I'm going to run you through some of the uh, delivery paperwork that uh, we'll do on the day that uh, we either A, truck the vehicle out to you, or B, that you come to the dealership for contact us, click and collect. Uh, first of all, that we run through, if you happen to have a trade in, we obviously make sure that the uh, transfer forms are all signed, and then we also fill out another form here which is called a police strip. And what that basically means, we do a securities check on your vehicle to make sure that it's not stolen. We update it with the current kilometres as per the day that you trade the vehicle and we require a signature off you down here. That's basically for the person authorised to trade in the motor vehicle. In regards to the rest of the paperwork, we run through quite a few different things here with, uh, with Ford that is required. First of all, we run through what is called the privacy statement. Ford Australia would like to stay in contact with you regarding future products, promotions, marketing material, etc. You have the option to tick yes or no as part of your right to privacy on this one. Having said that, if you do tick yes and you find the emails are just a little bit too much, you can always click unsubscribe at any time. And then we just require a signature down the bottom of this one here. From a servicing side of things with your new Ford, there's a variety of different service schedules depending on the vehicle that you're collecting. For most of the Ford vehicles, servicing is every 15,000 kilometres or 12 months, whichever occurs first. Unless, of course, if you happen to be picking up an automatic transit van and servicing is every 30,000 kilometres or 12 months. First of all, with the vehicle, there'll be a free inspection at 3,000 kilometres or three months, whichever occurs first. This is a complimentary inspection where we check over your vehicle just to make sure everything's running as it should be. And obviously, if you do have any questions or concerns, our service department will be more than happy to help out at that time. From then on in, servicing, as mentioned, for the rest of the Ford range, apart from transits, is every 15,000 kilometres or 12 months, whichever occurs first. And what we mean by that is if you're traveling 30,000 kilometres per year, you'll need to service your Ford twice a year based on the kilometres. Having said that, if you're only doing 5,000 kilometres per year, you would still need to bring it in after 12 months as your oils and fluids, etc., can age over time. Our service department is located here on site or also at uh, Frankston or our uh, Hastings dealership as well. So you can have your choice if you choose to service here at Jeff Wigmore Ford. Our service department is open from 7.30 to 5.30 during the week and from 8 to 12 o'clock every second Saturday as well. One of the other great things with Ford is that we also give you a complimentary roadside assistance, which is all included. The roadside assistance is valid for 12 months, but having said that, if you service your vehicle at a Ford dealership at no extra charge, they'll extend your roadside assistance out by another 12 months. Service at Ford again, another 12 months. Up to a total of seven years, roadside assistance is all included. So this particular form here uh, is basically getting you to sign to acknowledge that you're getting the roadside assistance. And in the state of Victoria, RECV will be sending out some information regarding that one. One of the other excellent features that I quite like about your new Ford is they come with what's known as Ford Pass. So this form here is just basically stating that your vehicle comes with an inbuilt modem and the modem is actually active as of right now when you're collecting your vehicle. And you may be asking, why do I need a modem built into my car? Well, as mentioned with the Ford Pass, there is an app that you can download to your phone. You'll need, the process takes about 15 minutes to fully integrate, so you'll need to pop some details in through the app. It will then direct you to take a photo of the chassis number of the car that you've just purchased. Then some details through the touch screen of the car and then back to the app. Once that's all fully integrated, from your smartphone, you'll be able to lock and unlock your car. You'll be able to start and stop your vehicle. You can turn on the heating and air conditioning before you hop into the car. You can check the odometer, see how much fuel you have left. You can even GPS track and locate the vehicle as well. Quite a handy little feature, particularly if the car does have to get stolen, you know exactly where it is at any time. In regards to your servicing books, for your new Ford, we have a variety of different things. So this is your service manual that will come with the car, and basically with the vehicle, our service department will stamp this every time you bring the vehicle in for a service. At Jeff Wigner Ford, we do also offer you a free puncture repair as well. So if you do happen to get a flat tire, just bring it into one of our Jeff Wigner Ford service departments, and at no extra charge, we'll be happy to repair the puncture for you. Another little thing that we do have here at Jeff Wigner Ford is what we call a referral card. 
So if you do happen to know of a friend or a family member that's interested in purchasing a new vehicle, please send them on down to us. Make sure they mention you're the one that referred them. And upon delivery of their new car, we'll send you out a little gift voucher for $250 as well. We have a nice thick owner's manual here. Chances are you're not gonna remember everything I'm about to run through with you in the delivery presentation. So we have a nice little cheat sheet here as well. And one of the other benefits of dealing with us at Jeff Whitman Ford is we also do have an extended warranty for you on the car at no extra charge. Your standard, Jeff, uh, your standard Ford warranty is five years unlimited kilometres with the roadside assistance up to seven years as mentioned previously. But if you choose to service the vehicle through us here at Jeff Whitman Ford, at no extra charge, we'll give you an extra two years on your warranty. That's right, you'll have up to a seven year warranty on your new Ford vehicle. Your spare key is all here, plus we have the other main one. Now thank you very much for your purchase and let's run through your new car. The vehicle that I have here is the Ranger Wild Track. But if you're picking up an XLT or an FX4, most of the details and features are the same. I'll highlight some of the subtle differences to you as we go through. First thing you'll notice is with your key, it's one of the smart entry keys. So you can lock and unlock the vehicle, or it's a proximity key. So you can keep the key inside your pocket, touch the door handle to lock and unlock the vehicle, and a push button start as well. And with the Wild Track, it does come with an electronically controlled hard lid, which you can use from the uh, key here as well. So you press that button twice, and you can actually open up the hard lid. And then having said that, once it's completely open, you can do it, and it can close itself as well. There are a few other ways of opening and closing that hard lid, which I'll run through with you again shortly. Both the XLTs, the FX4s and the Wild Tracks will come standard with a heavy duty tow pack, capable of towing up to three and a half ton. You get the ton, the ball, the wiring, the harness, the whole lot. Now underneath here, you actually do have a full size spare tire. To access that, you'll need to grab your jack handle, pop it through the little holder of the hole just here and wind your tire down to the ground. But to be honest, that's exactly what the complimentary roadside assistance that comes with your vehicle is all for. As we go up to the tailgate here, if the vehicle is unlocked, you can open this all up. And as I was mentioning before about using the remote control to open this all up, with the wild track, it actually does have a special little button here on the side, which will allow you to press it, and that will open up the tailgate as well. In the XLT and the FX4, there is no electronic hard lid, it is open covering, but you may have optioned up your vehicle with a soft tonneau cover, a canopy, or a hard lid as well. This little button on the inside that you used to open it, you can also press that to close it all up as well. And you can actually close the hard lid, even when the tailgate is closed. Now with the Wild Track model, there is no actual tailgate lock. It is all part of your central locking. So when you lock the car, it will lock the tailgate as well. If you do happen to have the XLT or the FX4, it doesn't come with the remote central locking as part of the tailgate. So if you do have a canopy or an optional hard lid equipped, please make sure that you do lock your tailgate. How you actually do that is with your keys, press the little button, slide your key out here. You can actually pop it into the tailgate lock and manually lock the car that way. If you do wish to get remote locking for your tailgate, our Ford service department would be happy to help you out and they're currently priced at $440 fitted to get that all done. As we keep heading around for the vehicle, as long as the car is unlocked, press your fuel, fuel flap and that will open up here. Diesel fuel only, don't put any uh, unleaded petrol in, you'll only ever make that mistake once because it is nice and expensive to get fixed up. In the back of the vehicle, I'd just like to highlight a couple of different things. So you do come with a 12 volt power outlet in the back of the center console here. You've got your armrests and seats, etc. But to get access to your child bolts and to your toolkit, there's just a little tab just to the left hand side of the middle headrest. Pull that up towards the roof and this whole seat will actually fold down. So your toolkit is all located right there and it does come with the two child bolts too. One of the other things that I quite like is in the base of the seat here, there's also another little tab. You can actually just pull up, it flips the seats up here, and underneath there, you do have access to a couple of different storage compartments as well. You'll notice in the XLT model and the FX4 model that they are not actually lined, it's just the metal there. 
you can actually option up for $120 to get the lining as you see it pictured here in the wild track. But of course, on the wild track model, that is standard to the vehicle. What's interesting about the smart entry that is uh, on your vehicle for the XLT, the FX4, and the wild track? It's a proximity key. So how that all works, you can keep the key in your pocket. To lock the vehicle, you just simply touch the outside of the door handle. To unlock the car, put your hand on the inside of the handle as if you're about to open it all up. So lock, unlock. Simple as that. Now very, very important, if you've stopped somewhere, you've hopped out of the car and you walk away with the keys, the car won't auto lock itself. So you will need to make sure that you lock using the, key, using the handle or simply press the lock on the key there as well. Now let's take you inside and show you through the inside of the vehicle. Welcome inside your new Ford Ranger. Allow me to go through some of the features and controls of your new vehicle. Now the first feature I'd like to highlight to you is actually part of your headlights and how they all work. So there's a little round knob here with the vehicle. So there's a few different settings. Zero is the headlights off. Twist it one notch to the right will go to Parker's. Then that's your main headlights on. And the next function is the auto headlights, which is to be honest what most people tend to leave it on. That way when it gets dark, it will turn your headlights on. And when it gets light, it will turn them off accordingly as well. These little buttons here can actually adjust the brightness of your dash up and down as well. And the other bit that I love is when you're towing with the vehicle, naturally the back end of the car can sit a little bit down like that, pointing your lights up to the sky. Press this little button here in, and you can actually twist the dial, which will actually angle your headlights back down to the ground so you're not blinding oncoming traffic. But straight up and down is the correct position for an unladen car as you have it right now. This button here to the left hand side will turn on and off your fog lights. And in the case of the wild track, this button here will actually open and close your electronic hard lid on the back. If you're getting an XLT or an FX4, this button here will actually turn on some little spotlights that are actually built into your rear sports bars to illuminate the tub area. Now, if we just go a little bit above, you'll actually have the mirror controls right here. So there's a little switch in the middle which you flick right to the right hand side and then you can adjust your mirror up and down and then left, left hand side, when it's in the middle, it won't do either. And this little button here, this is so you can actually electronically fold your mirrors in if you are parking in tight positions as well. Now, in regards to your indicators, they're all on the right hand side here of the steering wheel. So just flick right for right, left for left. Your wipers are all here. Now it actually does come with the rain sensing function as well. So if you go one notch up, it will go to the rain sensing function of the, uh, of the wipers. And in this little dial here, you've actually got a variable intermittent. So you can actually adjust the sensitivity as to how much rain before it turns on and also the speed. You then have the manual override of the low and the high speed if you wanted to. But again, just like the headlights, most people leave it in the auto function and that way the car will do itself. Now, on the right-hand side of the indicator stalk, there is a little button that you can press in and out. And you may notice on the dash there, you'll see a little car with dotted lines that comes up and off. This is all to do with your lane keeping function. Now, how it actually works, there's actually a camera built into the front windscreen of the car. So, as you're, if you're veering out of your lane without indicating, and the indicator is the key thing for the car to know whether you mean to change lanes or not, it will actually give you a bit of a vibrate through the steering wheel. And I can change it in the functions, but it actually does provide a bit of resistance and helps pull the car back towards the center of the lane. And I'll show you where that is in a moment. Okay, so with this control panel here, that will actually allow you to adjust a lot of the different sub menus through here as well. Now you can see that we have it on digital speedo, which is what a lot of people prefer to leave it on. But press the little arrow buttons up or down and you can toggle through tire pressure, average speed, distance to empty, taco, uh, engine temperature. There's a whole bunch of different functions there as well. Press the back button will allow you to get to all the different sub menus such as trip computers, fuel economy, driver assistance settings. Now this is where you can adjust a lot of the different safety features with the car. So you have trailer control, whether it's on or off to help provide stability for the trailer or caravan that you're towing chimes where it beeps when you press the different buttons things such as cruise control you can adjust between the adaptive radar cruise control and normal cruise control driver alert settings if you're getting drowsy the lane keeping is what we're talking to you about before 
where if the car um, gives you a bit of a vibrate through the steering wheel, etc. You have a couple of different modes in there that you can actually adjust. You can have alert, which is just the vibration on the steering wheel to let you know you're veering out of your lane. The aid is the one where it provides a bit of resistance so it can help pull you back towards the centre of the lane. Or you can have alert plus aid so you get the best of both worlds. Another handy feature I like is what we call traffic sign recognition. So that same front camera that uh, is for your lane keeping assist, it will also read the speed signs on the side of the road as well. So if you happen to be going through 50, 60, 70, 80 K kilometer signs, it will actually tell you on the dash what speed zone that you're currently in. One of the functions that you can actually do is activate a speed warning, which lets you know whether you are traveling faster than the speed limit that you're, uh, that you're actually traveling through. Now you can also build in a bit of a tolerance here as well. So rather than it telling you when you're speeding when you're right on 60 k's an hour, you can also say only tell me when I'm doing 63 kilometers an hour, etc. So that's one of the other little functions that you can have with the vehicle. And then there's various settings where you can adjust the vehicle or your key or your display settings through there as well. But most people tend to leave it on digital speedo. Now, in regards to the adaptive cruise control, that is all done through these buttons just here. So first of all, you press the top left hand button, which is the cruise control, and it will, a little light will light up in the dash to let you know that you've activated the cruise control. Once you've got to your desired speed, press the set button here, and that will maintain the speed. So let's just say that you're traveling and accelerating onto a freeway, you click the button at 98 kilometers per hour, and you want it set to 100. You have the little plus or minus here as well, so you can toggle up the speed to set it to 100 kilometers per hour. So just like traditional cruise control, you've set your car to 100 k's an hour. But let's just say the car in front is only traveling 95. What would normally happen with standard cruise control, you'd slowly catch up to the car and run into the back of it, or you'd have to brake or change lanes. What the adaptive cruise control actually does, there's a radar built into the front of the car, and you can actually maintain the distance to the vehicle in front. So you're traveling 100 kilometers per hour, the car in front's doing 95, once you get to your preset distance, your car will slow down to 95 to maintain the speed. That car pulls out the way, you'll accelerate up to 100 k's an hour, another car pulls in front, which is a little bit slower, your car will slow down again to maintain that distance. That car in front will also come to a stop in an emergency, so will your vehicle as well. It is a much easier way of driving on the freeways, plus a much safer one as well. Now how you maintain that distance to the vehicle in front is these little arrow buttons here in the middle. So you can actually, on the dash here, toggle up and toggle down. The more lines basically means more of a gap to the car in front. Now each line is roughly about two to three car lengths depending on what speed that you're actually traveling. Now I know the system and I trust the system. I normally have it set to a one, which is the closest distance to the car in front. If you're a little bit new to the adaptive cruise control or a bit unfamiliar with the technology, I recommend maybe starting it off with a two. You can adjust this as you're driving along at any time. I probably wouldn't recommend a three or a four because what tends to happen, you have quite a big gap to the car in front and then what will happen is other drivers will go, oh, there's a gap there and pull in front. Your car will then slow down to get the gap back. Someone else will pull in and then you'll slow down. You end up dominoing towards the back of the queue. So see how you go with that function, but it is quite a handy feature. I use it every single day on the way to and from work. Now on the left hand side of the steering wheel in the case of the wild track, this will actually adjust your other little last uh, LED screen where you can have your phone, your entertainment and your navigation system coming up through there. This won't be equipped in the XLT or the FX4s. On the left hand side here, you can adjust the volume, you have voice dialing and you can answer and hang up your Bluetooth phone system. Now allow me to run through the climate control system and the four wheel drive system in the car with you now. Now I'd like to draw your attention through the touch screen of the vehicle here as well. So the little home button here will bring you to this screen, which is a little bit of satellite navigation, radio station, and your mobile phone when it's all paired up. But just like a uh, smartphone, it is all a touch screen. You have a lot of your buttons down here on the bottom there as well. The first button you can do is go to audio, which will then bring you to your different radio stations. We have AM, we have FM, we even have digital radio stations there as well. Now, if you're not familiar with digital radio, what that basically is, you have a lot more stations that are all programmed in and a much better sound quality as well. 
So you can press the stations button on the top right hand side there and we'll actually think of a, uh, a few things. DAB Melbourne 1, you'll actually have three pages worth of stations there. Things such as Coles Radio, which is the music they like to play in Coles supermarkets. All the jazz and light FM, a lot of different triple M's all there as well. Sport and racing, you've got pages of stuff as smooth. Not happy with that selection, press Ensemble. It may take a little while for the uh, stations to actually come up there. And then you'll have pages worth of ABC stations. And I'm sure you'll be able to find a favorite. But if you just go to sources here, you can pop it back to FM or AM, etc. Now, how simple it is to tune in a radio station. So let's just say if we program the radio and you're not happy with our little selection here, you can actually press this little button down there, which will actually skip the songs and that will actually tune your radio station in to find the one that you like. Once you've found it, just hold the finger over on the touchscreen there to override what you want. And now that's all programmed in there for you as well. The next function that you can actually do is your climate control here. So just like the buttons below, this is actually basically a digital version of what we see down there. So you can adjust your temperature on the passenger side, adjust on the temperature on the driver's side, and you can see all the controls there as well. Fan speed up, fan speed down, etc. Now going through to phone, you can actually program your phone in through to the car itself. So it's very, very simple. Just simply press the add phone button and follow the instructions. If you have an iPhone, go through to settings, press Bluetooth, scroll down and will actually come up as Ford Ranger. If you have an Android phone, go through connectivity, do the Bluetooth again and it will come up as Ford Ranger. Select that on the touch screen of your phone and it will then ask you to pair the vehicle and make sure that the PIN number is correct. So press yes on the touch screen and press yes on your phone as well. And that will now all pair up and we have paired up through to my phone. Now, one of the other functions they can actually do is what we call emergency assistance. I always select this little button. What this actually is, is whenever you have an accident with the, with the car and the airbags deploy, if you're not in a position to be able to play with the touchscreen after that, it will use your phone to call the emergency services and send them the GPS coordinates as to where you had the accident. So hopefully you never need to use it, but it could just save your life. Now, now that you've paired it all up, it will have your recent calls, your contacts, Siri or uh, voice dialing for uh, Android there as well. Now through to navigation. This is pretty straightforward. You've got your little uh, zoom in and zoom out buttons here. You can search, just simply press that button and actually plug in the address as to where you want to go there as well. And that will bring that all up. Menu. This is where you can actually adjust the screen view, upcoming traffic listings, where am I, favorites, points of interest such as the nearest cafe, etc. You can even program in your home or your work address there as well. The other thing that you can do, this little uh, triangle on the right hand side, this is so you can adjust your view from a 2D to a 3D, adjust it so the map is always facing north and your car changes direction on the map, or adjust it so the map is always in travel with your car direction and the map rotates, etc. Now, going through to mobile apps, this is where you can actually download some select apps to the vehicle itself, or if you plug your phone in via USB, one of the two USBs down below, it is actually equipped with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So a lot of your favorite apps will actually come up through the touch screen there as well. And in regards to settings, this is where you can adjust everything. So such as sound, you can adjust your treble and your fader and balance, all those sorts of things. Uh, adjust your clock for daylight savings, so simply go through there and it can adjust the time up or down, etc. Bluetooth settings, phone settings, you can scroll across. One of the things I would recommend you do is when you get home, go to the Wi-Fi button here and just press that, that, and then go to view available networks, pair the car up to your home Wi-Fi. So just like how your mobile phone will need to do some software updates, the car will do the same thing as well. So that's all through Wi-Fi. Now, if you are lucky enough to be picking up a Raptor or a... Uh... Now, if you are lucky to be picking up a wild track, there is also an extra little uh, feature here called ambient lighting. So you can actually go in there and adjust the colors of the lighting inside the vehicle. So a lot of people pick the orange, for example, and you can adjust the sensitivity depending on how bright it is. This will actually show up when the lights are actually on at night time. You'll have illuminated lights through the door handles, down through there as well, and some other highlighting features throughout the car. 
Now what I'd like to do is draw your attention to the centre part of the car here. This has your radio and your climate control functions as well as your four-wheel drive system. Now you have the volume control all here for your radio and the tuning settings as well as on your steering wheel. You've got your skip your songs and you can pause and play as well. Now the vehicles, the FX4s, the XLTs and the Wildtrax all come equipped with what we call dual zone climate control. Now I'd like to direct your attention to the gear shift here as well. You've got a couple of different modes button on the front. This will allow you to put the car into reverse. And if I draw your attention here, you see the vehicle does come with a rear parking camera. Now, importantly, you'll also note that you get some visual indicators here for your front and rear sensors. So not only will you get the audio beeping as the car's getting close to an object, you can actually see the visual layer as well. Now, the other one thing that you can do is as you're turning the steering wheel, these little lines for predictive path will actually turn with you depending on the angle that you're actually doing. Now, one of my other favorite little buttons in the car, see how we got the tow ball all just there? Press this plus button on the top left-hand side of your touchscreen. That will actually zoom right into the tow ball, which makes it very handy when you're trying to drop a trailer or a caravan right onto the ball, you can get more of a precise alignment there as well. And that's a run through of your new Ford Ranger. As always, if you do have any questions or queries, please don't hesitate to get in touch with your salesperson or simply contact the dealership. Congratulations and happy motoring.